Hi, nice to meet you uh, virtually. Uh, I'm, my name is Ray Huang. Uh, I'm a director in mobile segment uh, in Arn. I've been working in the mobile industry throughout my whole life, um, my, my career, uh, which is a little more than uh, 16 years, uh, even in Arm and uh, even before Arm, right? Uh, and so with uh, you know, uh, my experience and the insight, uh, I'd like to give you a presentation about the uh, mobile market insight. I hope you find it useful. So what I speak about today is uh, I'm going to give you a trends on the smartphone market and device and technology, right? And also I will give you, you know, presentation about the 64-bit compute, which is a pivotal change in the uh, mobile computing, right? And I'm going to explain uh, how ARM products and technology such as a CPU and GPU has been innovating uh, to deliver you know, the requirements and the trends. Uh, and then lastly, I will touch upon the total compute, uh, which is uh, ARM's new pivotal change uh, on designing, delivering uh, our compute uh, and how we make it uh, accessible by developers uh, such as yourselves. So let me start with the uh, smartphone market uh, size first. So just how big is it? Uh, you know, from uh, 2018 to 2019, uh, the smartphone market has decreased a little bit by minus 4%, uh, which is, and, but still maintaining around uh, 15, uh, a little more than, uh, you know, 1500 million units. <clears throat> this uh, small drop is because of the, uh, you know, uh, the 4G era was coming to an end, right? So, subs you know, <clears throat> carriers uh, stopped, uh, you know, paying the subsidy. Uh, so, you know, users, you know, uh, were waiting uh, for the uh, new devices. So, yeah, it had a slight drop. But with the uh, 5G introduction in this year, uh, the volume was supposed to pick up, right? Uh, however, unfortunately, the pandemic uh, COVID-19 situation happened. Uh, so we are seeing uh, even a bigger drop, around minus 12%. So we expect that the, uh, the total volume smartphone volume this year will end around 1250 uh, million however uh with the uh, wider adoption of 5g and also a uh, fast rising consumer confidence uh we are expecting a very you know v-shaped very fast recovery so next year uh we'll have a 13 percent uplift uh, uh which is going back to the normal days and 2022, another 8% uh, uplift. Uh, so going back to the, uh, the continuous growth trajectory before the COVID. Another big trend that, the, uh, that is the worthwhile to note is that the, uh, if you see here in the orange box, which is a soft flagship, uh, it is really fast uh, growing uh, at the compromise of the uh, ULC, ultra low cost and the entry market. Uh, this is due to the fact that the yeah, now end users want a premium experience, but an about at an affordable price. And soft flagship tier is just touching upon uh, touching upon uh, this uh, you know uh, needs uh, as a spot on. So we expect this trend of uh, fast growing of uh, you know soft flagship market will just continue. Uh, the next big thing trends to cover is definitely five G. So everyone is talking about 5G. I'm talking about 5G, but how how big is it just, right? Uh, so as you can see here, uh, we have, you know, begun to see the 5G uh, shipment in SOCs and a smartphone uh, from the second half of uh, last year, right? Uh, it started small, definitely, and uh, with a premium uh, market. Uh, however, it is really fast growing. Uh, so by the end of this year, uh, at Q4, uh, our expectation is that the, uh, the smartphone, uh, the, you know, 5G, you know, SOC with the 5G capability will be, you know, almost up to a uh, half of the uh, entire market. And also, you know, most of the new SOCs, if not all, uh, will now have a 5G capability. So this will just continue. If we look at one more depth, uh, into the tiers, right? Uh, like I said, uh, 5G has started uh, with the premium, but it is really penetrating fast in the sub tiers. 
So from uh, Q2 of last year and to, uh, you know, until Q1 of this year, if you see here again, uh, 5G has reached more than half of the entire premium market and the sub flashy market and starting to penetrate into the mid tier as well. Right? Uh, and so again, this data is only up to a Q1 this year. So if we count, uh, you know, uh, afterwards, right, uh, like a 2Q and now, right, uh, this uh, penetration of 5G uh, will be way, way higher than what you see here. So before going to another trends, uh, I like to touch upon what does it mean? What does 5G mean, right, uh, to developers? So 5G has a lot of, uh, you know, features and characteristics, but I like to touch upon uh, three big things. First of all is a massive data rate. Uh, 5G, you know, while the LTE uh, at maximum uh, can uh, deliver only up to like a three gigabit per second, 5G can deliver five to 20 uh, gigabit per second, right? So which is a huge bandwidth, huge data rate. And this enables new use cases, right? Uh, which is a very hand data heavy, bandwidth heavy, such as 360 video streaming or uh, high quality video streaming, such as a uh, 4K and even 8K. Right? <clears throat> the second uh, feature is that the uh, 5G latency is really low, almost near zero. And not only it is really low, uh, but it is very reliable, meaning this uh, latency is not fluctuating. So, you know, you know we use the term URLLC, uh, ultra reliable low latency communication. Uh, so with this uh, URLLC, uh, you know, technology in 5G, uh, the latency uh, that you get is sub one millisecond. And like I said, it's not fluctuating, right? Very reliable. So this pushes the boundary for the, you know, mission critical use cases uh, that uh, we couldn't have in LTE era, right? And those use cases include like autonomous driving, as you can imagine, uh, to the year autonomous driving, you need a very fast real time response uh, without any, you know, uh, you know, hazard, uh, right? So uh, 5G definitely enables uh, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, use case. <clears throat> and also uh, even the, like a remote surgery uh, would be possible uh, with the 5G uh, technology. Lastly, uh, 5G enables massive connectivity. Uh, MMCT, we call it, uh, is, uh, stands for massive uh, machine type communication. But what it really means is you can have way, way more devices, connected devices and communications at the same time, uh, like more than 10 times than LT. So for example, per square kilometer, which is about uh, 250 acres, right? Uh, LT could have only up to like a 100K device, while as, you know, 5G can support more than 1 million devices. So it now enables a massive and dense, uh, you know, communications, uh, like a mesh network as well, right? And, you know, you can, you can connect more things, you know, small things like uh, sensors. So it is perfect for like IoT and embedded uh, applications as well, right? So with these uh, three key technology, you know, features of 5G, uh, how will it change the end users? And so how does it impact uh, like a developer such as yourself, right? So the changes in daily use, you know, use cases uh, are, you know, I'm just making out just a high level, you know, few examples, but that one is definitely game will become more dynamic and interactive as well. So you can enjoy like a real time multiplayer AR games, for example, right? And with the uh, massive bandwidth, right? Definitely the, your watching experience will become more vivid, colorful and live, right? So high, high resolution such as 4K, 8K, 360 video, which will make the, uh, you know, watching experience more realistic. And you can even do a uh, interactive live streaming. So it's just not unilateral. You can do a, like a bi-directional, you know, video uh, watching experience, right? And yeah, with the uh, virtual fitting and uh, you know placement, yes, the shopping will get uh, more, you know, uh, real and even fun. 
And so all this innovation uh, is possible along with the uh, technology and device evolution, such as more computing power on CPU or graphics, camera display, and even machine learning. So all these uh, trends, uh, 5G and so on, uh, will be possible only with the uh, more computing power, right? Uh, so ARM has a technology called Big Little, uh, and this Big Little, uh, you know, you can see that the uh, more performance, uh, computing power performance is available uh, more widely. Uh, for just before showing the graphs, uh, for those of you uh, who are not familiar uh, with the Big Little technology, uh, it is having uh, different CPUs in one chip uh, so that yeah, it can meet uh, performance as well as longer battery life. So when the workloads are heavy, then it runs on the more performant uh, big core. And when the uh, workloads are lightweight, uh, then it runs on the little CPU, right? Uh, to guarantee a battery life, a longer battery life. So it's like uh, catching a bird uh, with, you know, two birds uh, with one stone. Obviously, when Big Little was introduced, uh, you know, a few years ago, uh, almost like a six, seven years ago uh, into the device. Yes, it started only with a handful of the premium device. But now it has become very prevalent everywhere. So as the graph shows, uh, Big Little technology is accounting for like a almost half of the entire Android smartphone uh, uh, since last year, right? So this means that the uh, more performance is available to a wider devices. And if you look at the entry market, uh, which is around the $75 to $150 wholesale price. So this is a really cheap, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, price, uh, priced phones. Even in the entry market, Big Leader is now found uh, in half of the entry market, right? So this means, you know, smartphone nowadays, even the entry tier is packed with their more performance uh, with the Big Leader technology. So developers uh, can target more performance uh, without having to worry about the power consumption and the battery life. But all this computing uh, would be meaningless if you know the data feed in, feed out uh, is bottlenecked. So DRM has been uh, evolving along with this computing, uh, definitely. So if you look at the uh, capacity first, anything below two gigabyte uh, is becoming obsolete. Right? As you can see here, uh, this uh, small you know green area means uh, you know one, you know anything below the two gigabyte. And yeah, it has almost uh, no foothold in the market share. So everything you find uh, on the smartphone is either two gigabytes or bigger, right? Uh, so it has a lot of uh, capacity here. And if you look at the high end, uh, now even the premium smartphone are packing with the uh, more than eight gigabyte uh, ERM space. So it is closing to the like a professional laptop capacity. And if you look at the bandwidth, right, which is critical for how fast and how, you know, how fast you can feed in uh, and feed out the data uh, for processing. Uh, now more than now half actually almost to the uh, like a two thirds or three fourths of the smartphone is now packing with the uh, pack with the, uh, seven, you know, seven, up to 17 gigabyte per second speed. Right. So and although it's not shown in the graph, but starting Q1 of this year, a uh, smartphone with the LPDDR5 up to 25.6 gigabyte per second uh, has started to appear in the market, right? So literally the world for data is just wide open, right? Uh, and it's just not about the memory bandwidth. Uh, actually with the, uh, the adoption of the higher JEDEC standards, such as like a LPDDR4X or LPDDR5, uh, now the data transfer energy efficiency is getting better, right? So not only it is getting faster, but actually uh, they are doing this uh, data transaction in a more power efficient, more energy efficient way. So, so when you develop contents, definitely you want a vivid, uh, you know, your contents to be uh, delivered in a more vivid way, right? So, because of that, the display has been evolving as well, right? So every detail of your contents 
it can be now delivered more in detail uh, and a vivid way uh, to user size. So firstly, uh, now smartphone screen has much you know, wider color space, uh, meaning it is more colorful, right? Uh, it has a better color uh, you know, display. So, I mean, so smartphone nowadays use a standard called DCI-P3, uh, white color gamut. Uh, and this color space triangle is actually wider than the standards of the HDTV, meaning your screen on your device has more colorful, is more colorful and more vivid than the HDTV that you have at home. And then also, if you look at the size, uh, only about two years ago, five inches, uh, you know, uh, the, the size of uh, like a five inches uh, were dominant. But only within the two years, uh, now six inches, uh, six inches and above is becoming, has become already a dominant, right? So it has a wider screen, meaning uh, there's more space to, you know, uh, display uh, your contents, right? And along with the, uh, the size increment, uh, the resolution has also increased. So premium smartphone uh, has been packing with the uh, more than 2.5K resolution uh, for years already, right? Again, meaning uh, your you know, screen on, on your hand is actually uh, much more dense uh, than the HDTV at home, right? And lastly, you know, flexible display is becoming more and more widely available and becoming affordable. So, so even higher resolution uh, will come along with it, and there will be, a, you know, it'll free up how you, you know, your content is shown on the screen, uh, like a multiple windows, right? Uh, so, yeah much more freedom uh, is being given, you know, uh, thanks to the uh, display technology, uh, you know, evolution. And the final device trend I'd like to cover is camera, right? Camera is definitely high of the smartphone. And I like to say that the uh, smartphone can now see better, uh, but now and even think better uh, thanks to the machine learning. So let's look at the uh, number of camera first. Uh, if you look at the primary side, which is, you know, usually on the rear side of the camera, uh, main camera, uh, multi-camera is de facto uh, standard now. So 75, around the 75% of the entire smartphone is packed with the, uh, at least dual, you know, dual camera, two cameras, or even more, right? And with this uh, multiple ima image input, right, uh, reinforced by computer vision and machine learning, uh, is enabling uh, new interesting use cases. Uh, before I talk about what those are, you know, also if you can see here, camera pixel, number of camera pixel. Yes, there were, you know, uh, days of a uh, camera pixel war, right? Uh, but uh, a few years ago, it seems to have, you know, come to an end around the 12 to 18 megapixel. But now again, uh, with the more computing, like a computer vision and machine learning, this uh, camera number of pixel were is resuming, right? So from uh, last year, 2019, uh, even more than even 40 megapixel uh, cameras uh, has started to show up and it is really fast growing as you can see here. So now you can see like a 108 megapixels and so on, right? So again, uh, in combination with the uh, machine learning, right? So new use cases such as like a super zoom in, like a 100 uh, zoom in, uh, and you know recognition and segmentation, classification of the image that you see, right, is possible at real time. So camera is definitely a very interesting uh, trend uh, in the smartphone. So that all leads to how we can, uh, you know, evolve further, right? Uh, and that's why 64-bit comes in a great major play here. Well, 64-bit in mobile has been introduced and you know has been available for years already. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was introduced in uh, 2014 
in Android, right? So it's nothing new. Uh, but the reason I'm speaking about about it again here is uh, now it's becoming the mobile computing is transitioning uh, to a 64-bit only world uh, because 64-bit has much more headroom left for uh, better performance optimization and also it's, it, it provides you the clean code without having to worry about the legacy so it has many merits and benefits so ARM has been working closely with the Google uh, to make this transition. And what you see here is actually what Google publicly announced. So in December 17, 2017, uh, Google made the initial notification that the 64-bit version will be required on Google Play Store. And two years later, uh, in August, so last month, uh, Google made it official and again, uh, make, so they mandated that all the new applications or new update, updated application must include a 64-bit version. Only exception for like a Unity 5.6 engine. So games based on this version or older version of a Unity engine is, uh, you know, is, you know, has an exception but uh, with a limitation. Uh, this exception is valid only until August 2021. So what will happen in 2021, August, uh, is that the Play Store will stop serving non-64-bit apps, meaning 32-bit apps will not be served on the 64-bit devices, which is, you know, accounts for more than 90% of the smartphone market now, right? So, <laughs> Literally, you must have a 64-bit apps ready, right? Uh, and yeah, uh, and you know, to target, you know, to target Android Devil 28 Plus, which is Android Pie, uh, introduced uh, actually last year, right? So, and there's no exception. So, again, 64-bit only world is coming uh, into mobile, and so in accordance. So, just a few hours ago. Uh, uh, my general manager, Paul Williamson, has made it, uh, you know, the announce announcement as well uh, that the ARM's future mobile computing uh, will also support only 64-bit, starting with the 2022 big CPUs, right? So please be ready for this 64-bit only transition. So with all these device trends, uh, it is using, uh, you know, driving the use cases much more interesting. So with the gaming, it is becoming more PC and console-like uh, and high, you know, such as like a high frame resolution, 90 or even 120 frame per second. Uh, and, you know, machine learning is definitely, you know, coming to mobile as well. Uh, so not only like a matrix multiplication uh, speed up of with the dedicated uh, machine learning processor, but actually, I should say, machine learning is being democratized. Uh, so uh, it is becoming dispersed in across multiple computing elements, uh, heter becoming heterogeneous, right? And now smartphone uses a lot of your private and sensitive data, right? So definitely security is a key critical part, right? Uh, you have to you know, be able to protect the data in your smartphone, right? And there's always some functionality coming in and much more in a fluid way. So even though your smartphone looks like uh, it is off, like a uh, you know, screen off and everything, but it can detect and you know, recognize the environment around you with the motion, motion sensor that is always on and even you know, like a always on uh, sound or always on mic, right? So you can detect like an emergency detection, uh, like a car accident by with the motion and the sound and call 911, uh, you know, automatically, for example, right? And this always on functionality is only possible, is becoming possible with the, again, uh, this uh, democratization of the, uh, you know, machine learning, uh, heterogeneous machine learning computing. So ARM has been delivering, you know, our technology and products to cope with this, uh, you know, major trends. So how much has it really improved? ARM Cortex-A CPU 
has uh, improved its integer performance more than four times since 2013 to 2019, as you can see here. And this is purely just CPU to CPU comparison. So if you add up the more you know performance increments, such as like a higher frequency, uh, multiple cores that you find in the smartphone, uh, the actual performance increment in your smartphone is way, way more than four times uh, here. And as I said, machine learning is becoming a critical computing element now, right? So we are packing more machine learning performance into the CPU as well, right? So compared to Cortex-A55, which is our little core, nowadays, you know, Cortex-A77 uh, has more than 35 times of the machine learning performance. Uh, and it's, you know, uh, we will accelerate uh, this machine learning, you know, performance in the future CPU as well. So in a word, Cortex-A has been improving and keep, will keep evolving. But again, performance is not everything, like I said. Uh, your phone is always connected uh, and handling a lot of uh, your sensitive data, like uh, your ID, password, even like a credit card credentials and so on, right? Uh, so it is critical to protect this data, uh, you know, uh, you know, against uh, any attacks. So I won't go every detail of these features, but our Cortex A CPU now packs with this all these security technologies, right? Uh, which can protect your data again, a lot of attacks. Uh, for example, memory tagging and pointer authentication uh, and branch target identifier that you see here uh, definitely protects your data from uh, memory vulnerability and attacks. And our GPU has been improving as well, along with the CPU. And it's just not about the peak performance, right? Uh, since the mobile power budget and thermal budget is not increasing, uh, it is absolutely important to deliver more performance in within the uh, thermal and power budget. So we call it a sustained performance. And as you can see, frame per second, which is performance per watt. Uh, so this sustained performance has been improving for over years and it will just you know, keep increasing by introducing a new architecture. Uh, you know, so we have uh, introduced a Varha new you know, Mali GPU architecture in 2019 and we'll keep that delivering uh, you know, performance improvement. So we've been, you know, again, uh, you know, uh, evolving our uh, individual technology and products, uh, but we are making a paradigm change in how we design and deliver this or this compute. Uh, so we call it a total compute. So it's a shift paradigm shift in product by product focus to use case driven solution. So we are trying to make our technologies, our products work better together with the synergy uh, when it is packed into a solution. So we have uh, three pillars to do that. Definitely compute performance, again, not just product by product, but you know, better together, right? But also, yes, we are definitely strengthening the security uh, to protect your data. But uh, the last pillar, uh, which is uh, most noteworthy uh, for you, uh, is developer access. So with, with the, all the tools uh, for programming, debugging, and analyzing, right? We, we are making this uh, total, com you know, total computer is making all this uh, computing uh, easily accessible, right? And easily programmable. So it will definitely help developers uh, like yourselves to, you know, meet the market, uh, go to the market uh, in time. So time to market and also easier access and easier programmability programmability to reduce the risk. So I'd like to summarize. Uh, smartphone market uh, has, uh, you know, uh, gone through a slight uh, declination uh, last year and this year. However, we expect a fast recovery. Uh, so it'll be still a very uh, healthy and growing market. And 
uh, it is not only growing in terms of a volume, but it, all these device features and technology is also continuing to evolve. And it enables new use cases uh, that was not uh, possible before. Uh, and this is, you know, more way first, reinforced by 64 bit compute. Uh, and so ARM has been delivering in, uh, ARM IPs uh, to keep up with the trends with the more evolving performance. And we are now we are trying to make it uh, better together as a one solution. Uh, so, and hopefully uh, developers uh, will be utilize every bit of this uh, computing uh, in a more easier way uh, with the total compute. So that's my presentation. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed my presentation.